Hey, good morning, folks. Brad Cross here, BJC Outdoors. Hey, we're back out here at it again, man. Gonna do a little dragging this morning, starting out. Uh, got blowed off the river the last time I was out by a storm uh, coming up the river. Man, I'm glad I got out of here. I barely didn't make it to the truck before the rain set in. Got a little bit of different conditions as far as the water color is staining up, which I love that. I like dirty water. Uh, we got wind blowing up the river. I wasn't doing that the other day, but it shouldn't be anything that's gonna affect us. Well, we're going to drag up through here. Uh, still fishing on secondary ledges. Same thing we're doing last time. Uh, going to be dragging four planter boards using bluegill today. That's all I got is bluegill. So I'm going to get these out and let's see what we can do. Y'all stay tuned. Take that back. I got one skipjack head <laughs> and I'm going to use it. So I'm going to put the skipjack head on. Probably put it on this outside rod and I'll put bluegill on everything else. Last time I was out, man, it was a beautiful day. No wind. Hardly ever get them kind of conditions, which it's only supposed to be four mile an hour this morning, but of course, of course it's not. But we'll take it, man. It's not. It's not too bad. At least we got current. With no current and wind, it makes it a lot different. A lot more difficult to drag. I'm gonna do a few dragging trips and then I'm probably fishing to start doing a little a little more uh, pinpoint fishing like I talked about before. Uh, anchor down, you know, suspending. The current's too strong right now to suspend on what I normally suspend on. Even a five ounce weight won't hold you down on bottom. Hope y'all can see me. It's still a little still a little dark this morning. We're here first thing. Trying to get it done early because you still you see them dark skies back there, we're still in the same pattern. You know, storms can pop up at any time. And I guess it's probably the remnant still left over from that hurricane. It's been a week since that thing come through. But you know, you still got the unstable air around it, I reckon, so. Using a different hook today, folks. That's the striker hook. Mid-Atlantic catfish striker hook. Oh, uh, that's a 10 out right there. I, I, I'm. First time trying this hook. I tried the bounty hunter the other day, really liked it. It's 10 out. Uh, it's a little small for what I use for skipjack, but it's perfect for bluegill. But uh, I used it the other day and I gave it its, its opportunity to prove itself and it done great. But that right there, man, that looks like it's gonna be a bad to the bone hook. It's a little bigger than a bounty hunter. Uh, it's called a striker hook. I like how they do their offset a little more than than other hooks. I think that helps a lot to get that hook where it needs to be. Uh, I got it tied on the old cat stumper. I'm gonna be running this hook on all four of them today and give it a try. Like I said, I got several hooks they sent me to try and uh, I'm gonna try them all. Pulling a little faster, I'm having to pull 0.5 just to stay out front of the wind. Uh, I hope that don't affect anything because the other day I had to pull 0.3 because this current's rolling. Uh, you know, I feel like pulling slower is the best option. It seemed to be the other day for sure. But we're going we're gonna to try this right here. I might have to, you know, throw out my, my drift socks. I'm getting a bite right there. Throw out my drift socks, kind of give me a, a little more uh, resistance, you know, to pull, uh, pull that point three. So we'll do what we got to do for sure. I know the fish are here and I know they're hungry, so. That's always a good thing. <laughs> now I figured we'd start back right here where we left off because we got some unfinished business here. <laughs> I got some big bites down through here the other day and uh, lost that one one real real good fish I know and uh, lost another one that was, I feel like was a pretty good fish. But uh, there are some big ones down through here. And the, and the longer this condition stay the same, the more the, the fish will actually sit up in the area. And uh, and like I said, they, they could have moved. You know, it's been a week uh, since I've been out. So, you know, if they're not here, then I got another place. Just 
you know, 100 yards from here, I'll probably move in shallower. And, uh, cause they're here somewhere. You know, they didn't, they, they're not going forward. They, they sit up right here the first few days of that condition for a reason. Uh, but you know, I guess eventually the bait gets tired. The fish get tired, you know, and they get out, try to get out of the current. Uh, we're not in the main current, but we're right outside of it, so. Oh, there we go, folks. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right, folks. <laughs> I don't know what happened on that deal. The camera shut off on me. And then this current like this, and he got tangled in one of my other other rods so I really was I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't stop what I was doing so I finally got him to the boat where I can hang him up and see what's going on There's something about this area man like I said I don't know if it's that Bermuda Triangle crap that I call it or what but there's something going on right here that keeps cut, making my camera shut off pretty good fish oh mate yeah, he made a mess too. Dang good one to start with. Grass, man, it's all kind of grass out here. Which that's typical when the current's flowing on this lake. The crazy thing is, is it don't even, the grass don't even come off of this lake. It's coming from a lake above. When you get all that rain and they start running current, you can expect some some grass to come down through here. All right, you're gonna be nice to me. That's a good healthy fish, man. A little short, chunky thing. Getting healthy, man. They know what time of the year it is. So getting up here eating, eating these shad. All right, man, I appreciate you. Oh, mate. There you go. Thank you, Lord. There are some fish in here. But like I said, the current's a little stronger today. So I'm kind of having to adjust my speed and try to figure that out again. Uh, we're actually moving out into the stronger current, which that's where that one came from. So we're going keep pulling up through here. I got about another hundred yards. Uh, we pulled, I don't know, probably two or three hundred yards through there and just, just caught that one. So we're going to continue on up through here and, and uh, see if we can pick up another one. I kind of moved out a little bit further in the stronger current because the wind's blowing hit me from the back and uh, it was causing me to have to pull too fast. So I got out in the current where I got a little more resistance. Uh, I didn't want to put my drift socks out, man. I hate doing that in the shallow water, but uh, it kind of takes away a lot of the slack that you get from the wind hitting you from behind. So I'm able to pull at a slower speed. Right now I'm pulling at point one, and I've hardly ever been able to pull that slow. But, uh, I don't think you can pull too slow, you know, dragging for catfish. But I figure with this current like it is, these fish are hunkered down. So the slower you can drag that bait by them, the better chance you're gonna have of getting bit. I think this one's got grass on it already. I'm having trouble with grass. Yeah, this one right here is covered in grass. This is the one that had the skipjack head on it. That right there won't work. Catfish will not eat, will not eat salad. You usually can tell when that happens. You know, you, you bait and start dragging behind. But uh, sometimes you get a little bit on there and it won't, but it starts getting resistance on it like that, it'll usually pull it back. That's how I know, but there's no telling how long it had a small, small amount of grass on it. Kind of glad that one hit a bluegill because 
Matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this head off. This thing's about three days old and put me a piece of bluegill on here because that's what all my bites have come off of. I don't think it matters, you know, if you if you drag a, a bluegill or a skipjack in front of a hungry catfish, I feel like they're gonna hit it. Although there's probably are days that they prefer something different. And I know that for a fact there's areas where they prefer different baits. But uh, that skipjack, him being that old, probably didn't have no flavor left in him. A lot of stumps right in here. I see them on the on the graph. That's probably a good thing though in this current because these catfish they'll they'll hunker down behind stuff, you know, stumps and rocks, little depressions, whatever they can find to get out of the strong current. All right, folks, we're gonna have to abandon this. Hey, right here, I just pulled this one in to check it and it had grass all over the hook. Like I said, it's not really big pods, it's just them little small pie plate size pods of grass that gets balled up and that kind of slide down your line and get on your, get on your hook. All right, folks, we sit up in this other spot here. It's not too far, maybe three or 400 yards from the other, but I, so it seems like I'm out of the grass for now, which I'm sure what we just came out of will be washed down this way shortly. But, uh, you know, it's too shallow. I don't I don't use my graph to try to find these fish. I just, you know, kind of use my head and th try to think like a catfish, I guess. <laughs> uh, but once you, you know, a lot of times that works. You know, you just got to find the places, think outside the box. And, and uh, cause like I said, in this shallow water like this, you know, I could put my, I could put my side scan on, you know, and drive across here. But. You know, I'm in 10 foot of water. So once I drive across it, it's, it's ruined, you know, for a little while anyway, or maybe for the for the whole day, so. Oh, there we go. There one. I was just fixing to look at my phone and check the radar because it's getting dark back that way again. Seems like Mother Nature just don't want me to stay out here and fish. Let's see if I can get this one to come around on side the nets on. Come on now, don't do that, don't do that. I can't tell how you hooked. <clears throat> Ooh, I barely got that fish hooked. I'm talking about barely in the skin. I don't know how in the world I got that into the boat, folks. You barely got that hook. I'm talking about barely. I'll show y'all in just a second. <laughs> well, that was that was meant to be right there, buddy. Cause you was not supposed to make it to the boat. I wasn't supposed to catch that fish with that that kind of hook hook up. Y'all can see right there. That's all he's hooked on is that little piece of little piece of lip skin, and it just popped out. You just wanted to be on TV, didn't you, buddy?
All right, folks, there's a nice little blue. He ain't nothing, nothing huge, but hey, we'll take him. He got mud all over that side of him. He's laying against something. Typical for these aggravated fish. Like I said, some of them ain't happy with what's going on. And some of them could care less. They're going to eat anyway, but we're after the ones that could care less. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured out a long time ago it's a whole lot easier to figure out why you caught fish than it is to stress over and try to figure out why you didn't because you'll have a whole lot more days uh, that you don't do real good than you will that you do do good and if that makes any sense I'll explain it here in just a second but no uh, you know you take like days you come out here and you just wear the fish out well there's something that caused that you know current uh well pre-front you know before front comes through usually the fish bite barometric pressure uh it's hot it's not many things uh it don't take many things to make fish bite but it only takes one thing to shut them down you know and it can be one of one of those things, you know, like I said, a bear mister pressure. Uh, a front come through and you're on the back side of it. Uh, the current changes, water drop. There's several things that can mess them up. Well, the fish get aggravated, you know, just like we do about things. When they get aggravated, uh, kind of like us, you know, if you don't feel good, your stomach hurts, got a headache, whatever, you want to go, you want to go lay down. Hope you wake up feeling better. It's kind of the same way fish are. They, st they stick in that mud, man, and wait for better conditions, you know, better days. Uh, i found over the years that shallow water fish are more consistent about biting because deep water fish, uh, and, it, and it, it depends on the time of the year, but usually in the spring and fall, you can always count on the shallow water fish. They're going to do their thing. Uh, you may not catch as many today as you will tomorrow, or you may catch them today and not catch any tomorrow. You just don't never know, but uh, shallow water fish are more consistent than the deep water fish. The deep water fish, they got so much air they can roam, they can suspend. You know, you can be in 60 foot of water and them jokers be 30 foot off the bottom. I mean, it just, you know, then you get strong current and it pushes them down on the bottom. Well, then you gotta find the, the structure and points and, and stuff that they're set up on. So it's a lot It's a lot goes into it, but just don't overthink it. You know, keep it simple, don't overthink it. If you have bad days, try to think of what, what was different, what changed from the last time you was out if you had a good trip. If you have a great day, be like, okay, well, these conditions are like this. If I can find another day when it's like that, I'm probably going to catch fish. And normally you will. There's one, folks. See how big it is. It's running to me. Looks like it's got a little weight to it. It's staying down. Nice fee. Mm. Good, we'll take you, buddy. And that is a weird looking rascal right there. Hey, come on, man. Come on. It ain't worth all that. You trying to get me back for slapping your side of the head, ain't you? I don't blame you. All right, folks, there's a skinny, skinny old male, man. Beat all two pieces. He's healing up from the spawn, but look how skinny that rascal is. 
He's up here feeding, man. Trying to get fat for the winter. You got a long way to go before you get fat, buddy. There you go. I appreciate you. We may look up and catch us some monster eventually. Cause they're they're gonna be moving up behind them. You know, these are the first ones to move up in the fall, and then the bigger fish move up. Move up right behind them. Right there, folks. Oh. <clears throat> them things go crazy. It's shallow water. Golly, that didn't come up over there. Now they're going back the other way. Come on around that board right there for me. Come on around that board. What are you going to do? Don't get in that other board, please. He's gonna do his best getting that other boy. That's one reason I don't like to let my line out too far, folks, because behind that planter board, because I can control that a whole lot better if I don't. Yeah, that's a good one right there. That is a good one right there. We may actually beat the storm today, folks. I'm gonna take you around this way, boy. Taking no chance for you. This may be the biggest one of the morning so far. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Starting to lock them old striker hook, folks. I'm telling you. Well, Paul gonna make it hard on me to choose the one I like. <laughs> hey, but that's all right. I'd rather have several I like than, than be using the one that ain't working, that's for sure. Because he's right here, man. If you get one hooked up, he ain't coming off, you know. You're gonna lose some fish on all of them. I don't care what kind of hook you use. But you just gotta find that one that you got confidence in. <clears throat> and them right there, man. They got a bite on them when they when they hook up. Ain't coming off, but at the same time, they're not they're not that rough on the fish when you Trying to get it out either. All right, let's take a look at this rascal. That's a healthy fish right there. That's a good healthy fish. Thick, thick, solid fish right there. That one's been up here eating good. Laura, 
Get him back. Now you be nice to me. No sense in being, being mean to me. I'm just... <laughs> Man. I love it, folks. I'll tell you what, I love it. Nothing like that fall by. And here we are, first week of October. I mean, it's just going to get better. That right there, folks, is a, that's a shell cracker. I had one big shell cracker. I really hated to use him because he was, he was eating size shell cracker. And, uh, but if you can catch you some of them, that's the toughest fish in the, in the sunfish family. Uh, their skin's a lot tougher. And even if you're going to use them for live bait, they stay alive a lot longer than regular bluegill will. But, uh... I only had one, but I've caught three fish on that one piece. That's just a body chunk. I think I got the head on one of them. Still out here, but oh, that body chunk right there. And it's still got the, got the guts in it. The guts ain't even come out of it after three fish. So if you got an option between bluegill and uh, red ear, some people call them red ear. A shell cracker, if it's legal in your state, get them shell cracker, man, because they're a lot tougher bait. They last a lot longer. And for some reason, catfish like them better. Oh, there's one coming. Oh, another good one. Now this one, this one's doing the right thing. It's, it's staying out of my line so far. So far. Which way you want to go, boy? It's all on you. Well, we can go on that side. You ain't got to be all mean about it. He's a little bigger fish. I don't think I want to be trying to one-hand him. Yeah, that's a good one. That's what we're after. That's the bigger, the bigger ones that's up here. That's one, one of them, about like that other one. Come on, big boy. Come on, come on. I, 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 don't do that. I can't tell how he's hooked. I hate when they make that plunge. He ain't going far. We're only in 10 foot, but it don't take a lot to pull that hook out if they hook in the wrong spot. Do that, man. He don't want y'all to see him, folks. They're just mean in the shallow water. They don't have a lot of time to get their fight out. Come here, boy. Come here. You are just not wanting to give up or you <sighs> He's like some of them other ones I've caught here lately. I think I got a cooler in the boat, but I don't. Oh, mate. <clears throat> and I wouldn't keep one if I did. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, come on, man. Hey. Come on now, it ain't no sense in scaring everything else off. Oh, 
Although we are just about done. Hey, come on now. You ain't gotta be so violent. All right, folks. It's a long, lanky, lanky mean right. Hey, 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 don't do that, man. You trying to hurt me, ain't you? You trying to hurt me. Nice blue right there, though. Fall transition kit right there. Well, all right, bud. Let's get you back. I appreciate you. We're getting just about ready to leave. I gotta go look at some jobs this evening. Hey, you gonna break my finger? And we won't be friends no more. Oh me, thank you Lord. Folks, these fish down here get pressured so much they think everybody's got a cooler in the boat. All right folks, I think that's a good one to end on right there. We didn't like but about 50 yards here anyway. And man, I sure hate to leave a good bite because they're biting, they're biting good right now. And it can change at any time. It can either go south or get better, but I don't think it can get much better. You know, come out here for a few hours in the morning like that. The last trip was cut short. This one, you know, I got to fish, you know, as long as I wanted to, or as long as I could. But uh, I think we're gonna get them out of here and quit while we're ahead. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate y'all watching. I'll catch y'all next one. See y'all then, and God bless you. Folks, I just thought we was done. We got another one right there. I just thought we was done. <laughs> Don't know how big he is, but he sure is fast. He's a good fish. And these things are nuts in the shallow water. <clears throat> Don't you go under that boat. Don't you go under that boat. You just go on under the boat then. Come on in. They don't get their fight out. <laughs> well, folks, I thought we was done, but we wasn't done. That was me. Another good fish. They gonna wear me out, folks. They gonna wear me out. But I'll take it, man. I will take it. Okay, folks, that's four fish on that. Shit piece of shell cracker. Four fish. And I could still catch another one if I had time. Alright, let me show y'all this rascal here before we get out of here. I see we was I thought we was done. <laughs> that happens a lot when you think you're done and Come on, man. Let's be friends. Y'all learn one of these days. Some of these fish out here know me. Some of them don't. Some of them think I'm gonna put them in a the cooler. Another nice blue right there, folks. Like I said, they these down through here on this stretch was healthy, man. Fat and healthy. Well, all right. 
So let's get him back. Maybe we can get out of here. Come on, dude. There you go, there's your chance. All right, folks. We're out here. See y'all on the next one.